Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and today we're taking a first impressions look at Maldita Castile. This is a game by one man indie dev team, Loco Melito, a guy who, uh, I believe he's, I want to say Spanish, and who makes indie games in his free time for fun, and releases them for free. All of them are pretty much homages to old, uh, you know, NES and Super NES games. This one in particular seems to be uh, going for the Ghosts and Goblins vibe. Ghosts and Goblins? Ghouls and Ghosts? I can't remember which one it is now. So, shit's not going too well in the kingdom, and uh, we're one of the Knights of the King. So, just like Ghosts and Goblins, you throw your knives, you can get sub-weapons, can't attack diagonally. I believe it was was it Ghosts and Goblins you couldn't attack up, but in Super Ghosts and Goblins you could. Not sure. It's been a long time since the NES days. So we can jump. We can throw daggers. We don't have a sub weapon just yet. Another staple of local Melito games is this game is hard. I mean, we're only on the first level here, so it's not too bad, but as we go on, this is going to get kind of ridiculous. We're probably not going to get too far into it. Oh, there's a sub-weapon we can't get now. And just like Ghosts and Goblins, you can only take a couple hits. I believe two hits. I can't tell how much health we have because our life bar is partially obscured by the recording thing. Now, despite being made by a one-man team, I believe the music is actually done by a friend of Locomolito's. Alright, so we can wait here and see what sub-weapon we want to get. It'll just cycle through them. And go with... This one. Oh, no, wait. Never mind. They're not sub-weapons. I forgot. They actually replace your weapons. And these are the, uh, like, bolo maces. Chicken. All right, now we're in Zombie Town. It's a shame we can't actually use our shield. Suddenly, headless, handless zombies. So, it's got a very nice, you know, retro art style. It's even got scan lines. Oh, shit. Well, there goes our shield, which lets us uh, take one hit without taking damage. Oh, here, we found everyone's heads. This guy's trying to find his. I'm not sure why, uh, there's so many heads here. It's not a guillotine. Nope, we got our first boss here, the Beheaded Knight. Pretty simple, we can't hurt him until he's about to attack. And then he kills us. Alright, now we're back to knives. Which, the knives are not bad, because you can throw them really quickly. Luckily for us, the Beheaded Knight prefers to keep his distance, so we don't have to worry about getting murdered by his big-ass sword. Uh, 
And then we get our own little fairy. Which is sort of like an option in Gradius. In that she'll sh fly around us and shoot. So these must be the executioners that beheaded all of those poor zombies. The axes basically work like Castlevania axes. Oh, what's this? Oh, we got one of the uh, the goddess's tears, which were mentioned in that opening cutscene. If I remember what I read correctly, you actually need to find all five of those hidden in the game to get the real ending. And that seems kind of like a random place to find one, but again, it's supposed to be kind of retro level difficulty here. And weird secrets. I mean, destroying that one section of wall seems like a very, uh, Simon's Quest sort of thing. Oh, jeez. Mangroves. The axes are not very good for these ones on the ground, because they go a little too high. Oh, we can throw them straight up. I didn't know that. Okay, got some more health. Or was that- no, that was an extra life, not more health. Alright, now we fight Zarampla, the Mangrub. Which, again, is gonna be kind of hard to hit with the axes. I guess I can just throw them straight up at his head. Oh, here comes his children. Don't want to step on that goo. Oh, shit. Trying to focus between the grubs and the big guy. Alright, we've almost got him down. Oh, shit. Get out of here, you. One more hit. And bam. For God and Castile. A very pious knight here has defeated the enemies in the first area. And then we simply move on. Road of the Harpies. I'm surprised, actually, that we're getting this far in the first recording. Alright, so, we're being attacked while we're on the road. From what I remember when I played this earlier, the axes are the worst of the weapons you can get. Because they're just the least easy to use. I mean, they have a couple situations where they're, they're good because you can hit something without getting shot at in return. But in most cases, they're less useful than, you know, the knives or the bolo or the sickles, which we haven't seen yet. Even the owls are dicks around here. Alright, cut our health back. Luckily our fellow knights of the king are helping us out here. Oh jeez, giant two-headed. Well, unfortunately we've already lost one of our knights, Quesada. Now we have to fight the two-headed vulture. Uh, again, maybe not the best place for the axes. You can see we lose score when we uh, continue, and this is one of those games where it's short enough that you kind of want to beat it to get a best score. Alright, so now we got knives, which should work out better here. It 
See, I find games like this where you die in two hits are a lot less frustrating when most of the enemies also die in one hit. It reminds me of that weird game type in Devil May Cry. I don't know if it was in 3, but it was definitely in 4, where all enemies would die in one hit, but you would also die in one hit. I think it was just Heaven and Hell mode or something like that. And we already know that poor Quesada back there is doomed to be vultured. Alright, so this boss is a little hard just because of our tiny arena. And the fact that he swoops like that. I guess we could probably duck under it. Which I did not do there. Oh boy, I might have to actually cut here just to get to the boss. I don't know if I'll be able to get past this, this is kind of difficult. Alright, let's see if I can avoid it by ducking. Yes, I can. As long as we don't get hit by his claws. Well, if that's all this boss does, then this will be a lot easier now that I've figured out how to die by falling off. God damn it. Alright, so sometimes he does a double swoop. Like so. And we got him. Ain't no two-headed bird gonna stop us. And then we just jump off. Ew. Harvey egg is just falling out of holes in the walls. There's some sort of horrible harpy queen in there. I don't know what the boots do, I don't think I've ever gotten those yet. That egg just chasing me down. Alright, let's go a little bit farther and I think we're gonna stop, because this isn't too long of a game if I remember. And also it's free, so you know, if you like what you can see, you all can try it yourselves. Put up a link and everything. Oh, the boots make us jump higher. Some sort of undead archer. I feel like the boots make us a little floaty with our jumps, though. Totally wasted that weapon change. Okay, the windmill also kills us. Good to know. And we just found another tier in a box. I guess they're not all hidden. And also helicopter platforms. Nope. Oh, oh, just fell through it. Okay. I guess I should have waited until it got closer. So I think that'll do it for Maldita Castile. It's a pretty neat game that's uh, definitely a callback to Ghosts and Goblins. And uh, it's fun, it looks good, sounds good. So if you're into these kind of old, challenging games, feel free to give it a go, since it's free. 
like all of Locomolita's games, which he's made a few interesting things. They're all callbacks to old games. So if that's your thing, check it out. I'll throw up a link at the bottom of the description as usual. And, uh, this is Maldita Castile. I've been Shadefire, and I'll see you all around.